I think all sewers at all levels inevitably ask this question, but I think it gets asked the most when you're a beginner sewer and you've made a few garments, you start thinking, yeah, I'm getting the hang of this. But then you start comparing your garments and your sewing to a store-bought garment and then you start sort of thinking, hmm, why doesn't mine quite look like this? How do I get my sewing to look more professional? And the answer is usually one we don't really want to hear because it's actually so simple. Are you ready? I'm just going to lay it on you. Yes, it's pressing. You probably already saw from the title, of course, but yes, it's pressing. Now, I know you're not the kind of sewer that is going to shy away and just say, I've heard this before, because I know you really want to make your sewing look more professional, and I want that for you too. So let's talk about three main sort of tips that I use in my pressing routine that will help you get more professional looking sewing. And it does not include a fancy steam iron or having your ironing board set up all the time, though those things really help. This is three other things that I think will really help you improve your sewing and make it look more professional. And the good news is, is it's really simple. So it's things that you can start doing immediately. Welcome back my lovely ladies and gents. Thank you so much for joining me on the day that I cannot talk properly. Uh, my name's Evelyn Wood and if you're just brand new here, uh, on this channel we talk everything about sewing, dressmaking, bringing back the vintage sewing skills that we once used to have to improve our own modern sewing lives. And so if you're not yet subscribed, why not consider hitting that subscribe button so you get all of the future videos to really help up level your own sewing. This topic actually recently came up uh, in my uh, online school, uh, VintageSewingSchool.com, uh, where some of the students there, there was quite a number of them, I was surprised by how many, actually really started to mention to me just how much uh, the value, they have learnt the value of pressing and a few different elements within pressing, like how big of a factor that has actually changed their sewing. You know, it's just, it's one of those epiphany moments when you realize how important this is in sewing and it actually has nothing to do with a sewing machine. You can really up-level your garments and make them look so much more professional really, really quickly and easily. So it was talked about a lot in uh, Vintage Sewing School and I, and I just seeing how much when they got this that it's improved their sewing, I want that for you too. So I thought, why not let's talk about this here and cover just a few different things about pressing that particularly when you're first starting, if you start doing these things straight away, it's really easy to integrate into your sewing routine and it makes it really easy. And trust me, if you've been sewing for a while, there are still things here that I, that I know uh, people are still surprised about uh, and some extra little things that can put into even a, a more advanced sewing routine. Because I'm always still trying to improve my skills little by little, little tips here and there are always what sometimes make the big difference. So first of all though, yes, there is a difference between pressing and ironing. So to cover this one really quickly, uh, ironing is maybe what you might call it, uh, particularly when you're very new to sewing. Ironing is where you will actually go back and forth to smooth out wrinkles, so to say. That is what you would call ironing. Pressing is a term that you use more in sewing because it literally indicates that, that you're more actually pressing, it doesn't matter if it's on this, this is, I'll show you this later. Pressing is where you're sort of going up and down, maybe jiggling a little bit to get a bit of friction there, but you're sort of more pressing up and down and really skillfully maneuvering and only getting in certain little areas, pressing things open. You're not doing these types of actions. You're, you're pressing up and down and pressing something into place. So I hope that very briefly covers that, yes, there is a difference between those two things. Pressing is much more skillful, much more precise uh, thing that we do in garment making. The first, and this is the first rule of sewing, is 
that you should press as you go. Now I know there are plenty of well experienced sewers here watching this and give me a comment below if you agree with this one because I know I hear it all the time is press as you go. It's so important. So what does this mean? So it means that once you, it means that when you sew a seam, any seam, you then finish it first. So that means finish off the raw edges and then you press it. And then you can move on to the next seam or the next step after that. And only after you have pressed as you go. For example, the hemline down here, you want to have your side seam pressed open in the right direction and, and all of that business. So it's all nice and crisp and flat and sitting as you would because it makes the next step a lot easier. So all you have to do for the hem is fold it up and this seam line is already in place as you want it. If you haven't pressed it, it's very easy that it's going to look wavy, bubbly, you'll get puckers, you'll, it'll fold in the wrong direction, and it's just never ever going to look as crisp if you don't press it as you go, as opposed to if you just think, I'll oh, skip that, I'll do it at the end, it won't make a difference. Trust me, it really, it really does make a difference. So the number one rule of sewing, and I encourage all sewers to just keep this as a mantra and, a, and it like de go deep into your part of your routine, your workflow of how you construct garments is press as you go. So you sew a seam, you finish it. So finish the raw edges and then you press it. That is the whole process of sewing a seam and then you go on to the next step. Okay, next tip to really, really make those small little differences in pressing and making your sewing look more professional is to uh, keep everything in the correct directions and keep all of your seams in the uniform directions. So what do I mean by this? Pressing your, all of your seams in the correct direction. So first off, you have either open or closed seams. So that means the seam allowance can either be folded open or you will put it to one side. So having these go in the one direction obviously refers to seams that are closed because they could be folded on either direction. And believe it or not, there is a particular way that they should all sit to look really nice. And it's the small little things. So shoulder seams here should always be pressed with the fullness, with the seam going towards the back, yeah? And so on the side seams, you'll always want these to, with the fullness to be uh, sitting towards the, the, the back here as well. So your seam would be here and this would be your seam allowance. It's a little bit exaggerated, I know. So bust starts down here, you'll always put the seams, the fullness, the seam allowance should always be folded downwards. Yeah, always down. Darts, tucks and anything in the center Usually you would fold towards the center, but sometimes depending on where they are, you might uh, press them in a different manner depending, but it'll sort of depend on what it is because it's those small little things. If the fullness faces this way or faces this way, it gives quite a different look to how the, the tucks, for instance, uh, sit. Uh, and it really does make, make a difference whether it just looks right or just looks a little bit wrong. And the other thing is that I mentioned is that all of these should be uniform. So something that you don't think about when you first start sewing is which direction all of your seams sit. So you want these to both be sitting back in the same way. You don't want one forward and then one backwards. This, you don't want one, one side seam facing this way and the other one facing this way. Or worse, that they actually twist and up the top you've got one this way and one this way. I mean, that's happened to all of us, right? You know, it happens by accident. But... Let me just refer you back to the first point. If you press as you go, it will actually press all of those seams in the correct direction, all uniform, and it makes it more difficult for you to make a mistake and say have one press this way up here and your side seam press this way down here. If you've pressed it into place, press as you go first, they're all going to sit in the same way and it makes it really easy for you to have this uh, continuity in the way that you press your seams throughout your garments. You can see how these all sort of start linking together, right? Now, before we go on to the next one, if you are really vibing and enjoying this content, I would really invite you to uh, come have a look at vintagesewingschool.com and perhaps consider joining us there. 
It is uh, my monthly uh, sewing club where we take all of this kinds of information, this content, with tutorials and lessons about sewing to really take your sewing to the next level. So if that's kind of really what you're looking for and these little skills that will really make a big difference, uh, come join us at Vintage Sewing School because I'd love to have you in class. Let's keep going on to the next uh, tip that I have for you. And it's the one that uh, when I tell people about this one, oh, they never go back. And that is your tools, but more specifically, the tools that include pressing hams. So whenever I post pictures of these on my Instagram, I inevitably get asked so many questions, just like, what on earth are those little cushion things that you were just using at your iron? So these are called pressing hams. So this one is more called your tailor's ham and this one is more uh, specifically called a sleeve roll. Now, what are they? They are just little cushions and they are filled with sawdust. So wood is a good and it's just obviously sawdust is fine bits of wood because the wood really absorbs steam and it sits really, really flat. Now you can sort of make these, there's lots of tutorials online and I would advise you, uh, recommend that you don't try and stuff it with scrap fabric, although it's very tempting and it seems like a great idea. Scrap fabric will always be bunched up underneath and you're never going to get a really flat surface to actually press on and it's really important. So do, if you do try and make your own, do fill them with um, sawdust for sure. So just what are these used for, right? I know you're asking, come on, tell me. So now I do not go anywhere without these. When I took a, so a bunch of ladies to uh, France for a sewing retreat, I took these, these two pressing hams, both of them, were the first things that I packed in my sewing equipment because I cannot press without them. I have also made other videos about sewing tools. I have the uh, video on the, the beginner sewing tools and a video on uh, sort of the tools you want to upgrade to. I put these in the beginner category because they are so essential, absolutely so essential. And if you're curious on where to get these from, I do have uh, some links to Amazon uh, down below. So go check that out. And there's a bunch of, you can see all of my different uh, sewing tool recommendations there as well. So uh, sleeve roll, of course, is probably pretty, uh, simple you might have guessed already, is so that you can kind of insert these. This one it works really well for a sleeve. And you can actually then get just this seam here without having to press everything underneath it and squash it all and just make a big mess. So you can actually only just press, you know, up and down factor, uh, this seam along here. It just touches the top. Because this is curved, you are only touch the very top there and you don't squash everything else around it. That's their main sort of purpose. So I use this for almost every seam I've got. Um, they're so, so useful. Uh, the other thing you use them for is around curves. Perhaps this one will be easier to demonstrate. So think about if you want to uh, press this, uh, this is a this is a thrift thrifted uh, top that I got recently that has already been refashioned. So I bought somebody else's refashion. Uh, I might make another video on what I'm going to do to just kind of fix this up. You can see it's a bit rough around the edges. Uh, so I'm going to do some more professional looking finishes on this one, but that is for another video, I think. So it allows you to really sit this on a nice curve and get it curved. So sitting this here, uh, obviously I'd sit this flat, but it means that I can, I can do this in a curve and then I can press my armhole, my neckline, all of these things in the actual curves that they are. It is like so, so useful. And again, because you're only pressing the top, you're not squishing it down. How hard is it to try and, and like do the same armhole, but on a flat, there's just, it's all wrinkled everywhere and trying to do it over the very tippy little bit of the, the ironing board at the end is really, really hard. So I cannot recommend that you get your pressing hams, the sewing, the pressing tools, these two. Now, if you can only get one, uh, I started with just the sleeve roll and I used that one for many years just as is. I So I would recommend to get maybe this one first, but honestly, just get both. If you can, just do it. You will not regret it, I promise. I cannot tell you just how much by uh, taking a bit more time and care to really master the art 
of pressing, to be skillful in the way that you look at what you're doing, to use steam, use the right equipment, use the right temperatures and just apply a little bit more skill and thought into pressing and things like press as you go and make uniform seams really does make such a big difference to your sewing and I know that you'll see great improvement. It's the simple little things like pressing that make the big difference I think in our sewing sometimes and it's something that I keep on working on myself as well. So let me know in the comments below which one of these pressing tips you are going to like, which one you like the most, which one you're going to use. And if you have some of your own pressing revelations that you would like to share with us, uh, put those down below too, because the more we share information with each other, the more we all learn new little tips and tricks. So make sure you go and read all of those comments because there's so much wealth of information from all of you down there as well. And remember, do like this video if you liked it. Their links are down below in the description box, so go ahead there. And until next time, happy sewing. Bye.